Hi everyone, me and Pickles here and Scampi elsewhere in the room. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm talking about another question that people frequently ask, and that is, should you keep parrots alone? Is it okay to do so? Get a question loads, it would be well worth covering the topic. Now, just before I start this video, me and Sophie believe that parrots should be kept in at least pairs. However, this video isn't about shaming anyone. It's completely fine in various circumstances to keep a parrot alone and lots of those circumstances may occur. For example, you take on a rescue who's a solo parrot, hasn't been well socialized, etc, etc. No, none of that is going to be done in here, no shaming, none of that. I just want to talk about the common reasons that people give for keeping parrots alone and maybe refuting them. Giving our reasons why we think you should keep parrots in pairs or more. And then talking about some tips if you do have a solo parrot to improve their life. Some of them will be common sense, but some of them you may not have thought of, so it may help you and your parrot get on really well. Now, the first reason that people give for keeping parrots solo is that if you get any more than one bird, they won't bond with you, they won't be interested in you. And I've covered this in other videos, but well worth covering here as well. That is a complete myth. You can see from our parrots, we have loads of pairs and they're bonded pairs, they've gone really well, and they still want to be with us. They still actively want to socialize with us completely normal. The only exception to this is when parrots are nesting or are exceptionally hormonal, then they may be funny about their humans because they're in that hormonal state and protecting their nest. Generally, having pairs or multiple birds does not affect the bond, especially if you put in bonding work and work with them. Now the next one is something that's actually resurfacing a bit. It's advice that's been given. I don't think it's true at all, and that is parrots are easier to train alone. Now, if you have like 10 birds and you're trying to train all 10 at once, yep, it's gonna be easier if you have less. However, if you just have two or three, it isn't that much easier to train them, especially if you are working with them individually rather than all as a group. It's, it's bad advice, it's not true, you know. Many times you will see that parrots will actually learn from each other. Fish and Chip are a great example. Fish learned the trick with the bottles just by watching Chip and he learns by watching it. And that is how a lot of flock species learn. They learn from each other. So if you've only got one bird and you're keeping one bird because you're worried you're able to train them, I think it's the wrong way direction to go in. The last reason that people normally give for keeping birds solo is they are easy to, easier to handle. And yes, multiple birds does equal multiple effort and loads more noise, etc. depending on what their personalities are like. However, the actual handling of a parrot isn't any easier or harder with multiple birds, you know. But all our birds will step up, it's because it's down to the training. It's the effort you put in that matters, not the amount of birds you have. Now we talked about some of the reasons people um, give for keeping birds alone. I want to give some of the reasons we think are good for keeping them together. And the first and most important one is companionship and communication. If you have parrots of the same species, they provide companionship for each other, especially stuff like conyers, they are really strongly closely bonded, and they can communicate and make all their cute noises to each other. It's really important, it's enriching, and it's valuable to them. And we thought it's probably the biggest reason why you should keep pairs of parrots, at least. Now, another really good reason to keep pairs or multiple parrots is play and learning from each other. Just like we talked about in the training example, you know, it's actually good for their training. They will learn from each other. They, training becomes easier in some ways when you have multiples. And just seeing them play is really rewarding and fun. And I just love seeing it with our parrots and love seeing multiple parrots playing around, play fighting like the conures, cuddling. It's really rewarding to see. Now this last reason for having multiple birds, I think is probably one of the most important ones, especially for people who are busier and have regular working hours where they can't be with their birds. And that is, if you're out and about, it gives them company, you know, you don't have to put a TV on, they have another parrot there to keep them company and get all that social interaction with. And it's invaluable for them. Sometimes when you have a solo bird and you do have to go to work, like we all do, that can be an issue. And I'm gonna talk about that a little bit in the tips for having, basically setting up for success if you do have a solo bird or intend to get a solo bird from a rescue, etc. Now we talked about all those reasons why people say get a solo bird, we talked about the reasons why we think you shouldn't, you should just get multiples. Now let's talk about some of the things you should do or consider when you do have a single bird. Like I said at the start of this video, the video is not about shaming people who have solo birds, it's pretty common and that's, I don't necessarily think it's that bad if you as the owner or the companion for that parrot step up and do everything you need to. The issues tend to come from places where people aren't fully prepared and just not really aware of what um, responsibility comes with having a parrot. So when you have that individual cockatiel, conya, macaw, whatever, 
you are their flock. You are their most closely bonded person. You become their partner, their everything almost. You are their world, basically. And it's so important to step up to the plate in that regard. You know, sometimes people wonder why their bird follows them around and screams when they leave the room. It's because they miss you. They're a flock animal. They're used to being with their flock at all times. And it can be a bit unusual or a bit scary for them, especially when they've come from like a big flock and you've brought them home to go into that environment. So you are their flock and you need to sort of be aware that you are, that that's what you are and that you have to always be there for them. Now that's not to say they can't have independent play and can't be trained to like bond with other people and have lots of fun on their own, which leads on to the next point, making sure you have a lovely big cage, making sure you have lots of toys, lots of enrichment, making sure that you have foraging opportunities because parrots spend a lot of time foraging in the wild. And replicating that at home gives them more things to do on their own, more space to enjoy. Just for example, if you do have to go to work and lots of fun things to do, you know, because the more they have to do, the busier they are, the more, the less clingy they will be with you and the more independent they will be. Now it goes about saying it needs, you need more effort, more attention, etc. like with the first point, but you also need to do more training with them as well. You may need to, <laughs> scampy, you may need to train them to explore different things, train them like you would your own child, how to interact with foraging opportunities. And once you do put that training in, that solo bird's life becomes much more enriching because normally they'd have other flock members to learn from, but in this case, you're, you're the teacher. You have to teach them everything they need to know. And the more you do that, the more enriching they, their life can be as being an individual bird on their own. Now, the last couple of points I wanted to make with regards to keeping a parrot solo successfully are related to hormones and being mindful of our actions. So firstly, hormones are a major thing with parrots. You know, they're highly affected by them. You can mitigate their effects but also our actions that may lead to hormones because the individual parrots can be very closely bonded with us. If we start showing them signs of attraction, almost like inappropriate petting, um, feeding a, a, like a really like nutrient rich diet, that's, that's just too much stuff like, or junk food, then that can cause problems for them and cause frustration. So we need to be aware of the signals we're giving our parrot to make sure that our relationship remains as friend, close friend and flock mate family member rather than potential mate. So if you go into potential mate territory, you're setting your parrot up for all kinds of frustrations and stress behaviors. So that's not ideal. And the last point as well, is just considering uh, the environment in general, considering fear factors, and just being mindful of all sorts of things going on. I know it's very common sense advice, but often the best advice is common sense. So guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Um, I hope it maybe sort of gave you some food for thought about what you do with your solo parrot or if you want to consider getting another one or you know all the different sort of things I've mentioned here. If you have any comments or suggestions or anything you'd like to say, feel free to drop them down below. But in the meantime, from me, Pickles and Scampi, who have now finished cuddling, take care, have a really nice day.